Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Box and Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at the actually rather awesome MSI Forge 100R case from MSI. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at MSI's Forge 100R. Now there's actually quite a few different versions of the Forge 100 actually on the market at the moment. There's a Forge 100M as well, I believe. This is the addressable RGB version that comes included with two addressable RGB fans up front and a single standard fan in the rear. The other options available are exactly the same design, but with three RGB fans, similar sort of price. Uh, all the links will be in the video description, so you can check all those out if you decide you want to go down the RGB route on the 12 volt, or if you want to go for a five volt addressable RGB, this is the one you should be looking at. So what is this case? So it is actually a really, really good case. It's somewhat what I would call a value case. I'm not gonna call it a budget case or a cheap case because really it's neither of those things. This is a value for money case from MSI, which for a motherboard vendor, that is normally not the case, especially if you're looking at things like ASUS, which, well, ROG tax is definitely a thing. But with MSI, that is definitely not a thing. This currently retails in the UK for somewhere in around the 40 pounds mark, Initially, it was released on the market for somewhere between 60 and 70 pounds here in the UK. So prices have decreased somewhat. The case is getting on for nearly two years old now on the market. So you would expect that sort of thing to happen. But I think now is probably the time to pounce. If you've seen this case before and you've liked the look of it and you're not entirely sure, the price I believe at the moment is absolutely right. So what do we get for our money? Well, you get a ATX form factor case. Now, it will accept other motherboards such as micro ATX and ITX should you wish to. You also get a really nice tempered glass side panel. You get included fans. You also get really nice cable management, lots of flexibility, and as you can probably guess from the front, a lot of airflow. Now clearly from a design point of view, if you don't like this split mesh design, this isn't the case for you. But if you actually can get past the angular design on the front, which I personally think looks really, really nice and is something a little bit different on the market rather than having either a solid front or just complete mesh. I think this breaks up a little bit more and gives it a little bit of distinction. So with all that out of the way, let's do a quick teardown of the case, go through the pros and the cons, and then at the end of the video, you can work out whether or not this is gonna be the case for you. Now, obviously, if there is anything in the video which you don't feel that I've covered or you've got any further questions on, don't forget there is a comment section below the video, so you're more than welcome to ask there. Or alternatively, head over to our Discord, which is free to join, and you can ask any of the questions there in considerably more detail. So let's start off with tearing this thing down. So let's start off with the front. So in this front section, obviously, as I've said already, we've got this really nice design front mesh, which is split into two halves. You can put in here three 120 mil fans, two 140 mil fans, 240 mil radiator is what they would say actually on the box. But actually after taking this apart and looking inside and doing the measurements, you can fit in the front here a 360 mil radiator. Although there are some caveats for that, which we'll go through as we do the tear down. Removing the front panel is very, very simple indeed. There is a grab handle on the bottom. So all it takes is a quick tug and the front panel comes off relatively easily. Now for cleaning purposes, which potentially you might wanna take a look at because this is essentially the only dust filtration on the case for the intake. So you might wanna have a look at this every now and then. But once you've taken this off, you can see the fans in here. So as it is a split design, clearly there's not really a great deal of point putting a fan in the middle, which I think actually from MSI's point of view and obviously cost purposes makes an awful lot of sense. Now, if you do want to add an additional fan in this middle section, you could, if you want to, take the one from the back, put it onto the front and then replace the back one with another MSI fan. Now these fans themselves, whilst we're talking about fans, are actually really decent fans considering they're included essentially free of charge with the case. They've got a really nice PWM RPM range between 300 and 1300 RPM. They're pretty much whisper quiet and feature some really nice addressable RGB functionality. And they look, well, nice and bright. Colors are awesome. Nothing to complain about there. If you do want to add more addressable fans, then you certainly can do. Obviously, you can add any make you want to. I have found on eBay, someone who's selling the kind of OEM style fans, which these essentially are, for somewhere in the region of about five pounds here in the UK. So if you do want to check out those, there'll be links for those in the video description also. Nice features of the fans as well, they are completely standard. So you don't have to worry about having custom headers, all that kind of stuff. They're using the standard four pin PWM for power and speed control. And for the addressable RGB, we've got the standard five volt three pin addressable RGB header. 
and also a nice feature, there is a pass-through allowing you to daisy chain other fans should you need to, although for this particular case you don't need to because there is an addressable RGB hub which can connect up to six devices. So if you go past six devices, then you can daisy chain them if need be. So let's take a look at the side now. So on the side, we've got this tempered glass side panel and something which I actually quite like to see is the fact that it isn't a full size panel. This is gonna aid with some of the cost savings and also give the case some rigidity as the bottom basement section is completely all metal. Something which some people may not like is the actual branding on the side here. So we've got the mag branding on here from MSI and depending which angle you look on, it's either completely invisible or it does stand out quite a bit. Personally, I quite like it it breaks up what is otherwise a boring piece of metal. Moving up from that, we've got this tempered glass side panel, four mil thick. Sadly, one downside of this, there isn't any kind of framing around the outside edges and the actual screws, or the thumb screws that it's held on with, they are somewhat on the cheap side and using a friction piece of rubber to keep it all in place and for vibration, that kind of stuff. The panel itself is actually held on or held in place. There is a slight ridge at the bottom there, so you can take out most of the screws without the glass falling out, as we will demonstrate now. And hopefully it won't fall out on camera. And there we go, so it is held in place. It is only on a very small lip on this bottom section, so obviously do be careful depending on the angle. And the glass panel itself, like I said, there's no edging on it at all, so it's just a solid piece. Again, keeping costs down in production, and there is a, actually a really nice semi-smoke tint to it. And taking the peel off there, you can see it's a very light smoke tint. What I actually like, I'd much prefer that than the completely clear piece or a piece which is maybe a little bit too dark. So with the glass out of the way, we can take a closer look inside and actually the internal arrangements is brilliant. There's no other way I can put it. It all works exactly as it should do. There are some things which could have been done slightly better, but from my personal recommendations, they're not deal breakers. Something which I would have liked to have seen change differently is on the back, the PCI Express blanking plates. They are the snap out ones, but it isn't the end of the world. If you do snap out a couple of them for a graphics card, for instance, they do actually provide in the packaging an additional two PCI Express slot covers, standalone ones, so you can replace them should you need to. Maybe if you build a PC, then decide to sell it on without the graphics card, you can put those slots back in to cover up the empty holes. So as you can see, obviously there is a motherboard installed in here. I've done that purely to give you a sense of scale and sizing, etc. And it actually works out really well. This is a ATX form factor board and something which obviously it is an MSI board, so you kind of got to give it that. But if you look at where all the holes are for actually cable management and routing, they all make an awful lot of sense. So starting at the bottom in this basement section, there's two really large cutouts in the normal places for things like your front panel audio and at this section here for things like front IO. Those work out to be a very good place. And even if you've got slightly larger cables, they'll fit through there easily. They have made the gap nice and wide. And actually something else, which is uh, something which I actually suffer with quite often, is if you put the power supply in first of all, and then you want to wipe your front panel connections, it's absolutely fine because there's enough room there to pass the cables through, even with the power supply installed. You don't have to go wedging the power supply to put your cables through. That is typical for the front panel audio connectors. Slightly thicker ones like the USB 3.0, if you've got it somewhere over here, you might struggle a little bit with that and you may need to remove the power supply. But in general, for all things like fan connectors and USB headers, or USB 2 headers, I suppose that would be, uh, it's going to be absolutely fine. Taking the back panel off, letting some light through, you can see this a little bit more clearly. So something else we've got on this bottom section and the basement, there is ventilation. So if you wanted to, there is actually mounting areas there. So you can put two 120mm fans on this bottom section to try and bring some air up through. It's not really recommended and especially in this place where the power supply is going to be, the fan is basically going to be sucking on, well, basically bare metal, so I would not advise that. But certainly if you want to, you can do. There's no reason why you shouldn't do. Hopefully now you can see those pass-throughs a little bit better. So we'll tilt this down a little bit. You can see the pass-throughs in really nice places. When it comes to the ones around the side, these mark out really, really well. So for our SATA connections, which are generally on most motherboards, going to be in this kind of area. You've got a nice little pass-through there for your 24-pin power supply and also for front panel connectors for USB type C, etc., which this case sadly doesn't have, but if you did, then you've got cutouts there, and also for the top section for fans and adjustable RGB, that kind of stuff. Really nice places where they've put it through, so you can just literally put your cables through, fold them around, makes it a really nice, tidy little job. At the top, there's two big pass-throughs there, so if you are putting a 240mm radiator at the top, you can do that very easily and still gain access and pass things through. 
put in your EPS connector in that top corner is going to be an absolute piece of cake, lots of room there. You can put in the top a 240mm radiator, again two 120mm fans or two 140mm fans, the choice is entirely up to you. There's somewhere in the region of about 55 to 60 mil depth between the motherboard and the top of the case there, so even if you go for a slightly thicker radiator, you should be absolutely fine. There is also quite a decent offset, so with 240mm radiators, even with this board, which has got a particularly large VRM over this top section, it's going to clear it very easily, even with slightly larger radiators. Also, something else of note is for those of you that are using two and a half inch drives, either SSDs or hard disk drives, there's loads of storage on here. So we've got two sections here, one there and one there, and pass-throughs again there, so you can run your power and data cables through very easily. And if you've got RGB ones, for instance, they're going to look really nice there and will tie in with the build and also fill in that void. Other points of note is there is a large cutout for putting custom CPU coolers in and also talking of CPU coolers this will take up to 160 mil CPU coolers so that pretty much includes most of the high-end coolers on the market right now obviously things like the huge Corsair block cooler you're going to struggle with that because that's 170 mils but realistically pretty much everything else on the market is going to fit in here with very little problems again if you're not sure if your CPU cooler is going to fit let us know in the comments section below Looking at the very back, you can see the included 120mm non-RGB fan, so that's just a plain MSI fan. Still got PWM control, and again, it will spin between 300 RPM and 1300 RPM, and again, is pretty much whisper quiet, even actually at the top speed, so well done MSI there. At the very top, in terms of ventilation, you do have a removable magnetic filter, which is very common these days, and I'm actually really pleased to see that for the top section, it's really nice and open using that hexagonal mesh, which is really good for airflow. So again, depending on what you're putting up there, even if they're not static optimized fans, they're still going to have a fighting chance of removing the heat from the chassis. Moving around to the back, so not a great deal going on here, but you can see the uh, integrated IO shield on the motherboard fits in there absolutely fine and actually looks really nice and stealthy. You've got the rear of the 120mm fan. There is a little bit of adjustment on there, up and down. It would have been really nice if this was a little bit wider to put a 140 in there, but 120 is going to be absolutely fine. Got a adjustable slider on the side here for clamping in your PCI Express cards. It's a relatively cheap way of doing it, but it works just fine. Again, we've got those snap out PCI Express blanking plates, and at the bottom, we've got the section for our power supply. Moving around to the back, so this is where all the wiring is going to go on. You can see slap bang in the middle there, we've got our addressable RGB controller. This is actually connected up to an LED button, which is a specific button on the front of the case, which is something nice to see. Normally, in this sort of price point, most manufacturers would take the reset switch and repurpose it as a RGB or reset switch. But in this particular instance, we've got both, so that's excellent. So you can leave that permanently wired and not have to worry about it. You can connect up to six devices on here. This is SATA powered as well. And also there is a pass through using that standard five volt three pin addressable RGB header. So if you have a compatible motherboard, you can plug it into there, no problem at all. Or if you want to just take advantage of the built-in controller and use the LED switch to cycle through the colors. Something else which is quite nice, which not all manufacturers will do, I've noticed there is actually some black tape on here. A very simple thing to do, but actually it will prevent the addressable RGB headers from slipping off, which they sometimes have a tendency to do. So little things like that, attention to detail, I really do appreciate. On this side here, we've got another rack for mounting a two and a half inch drive, either hard disk drive or SSD. Something which you may want to take attention to is not really a deal breaker, but it's something which I've known other people have had issues with. If you are putting a drive on here, you will really need to have your SATA and power connections facing downward, which kind of makes sense to keep the wires out of the way anyway, because if you have it at the top, the screw which actually holds in this bracket is going to get in the way. Now, if you want to mount it the other way up, you can just leave that screw out. It will slot in and stay there in place. So you've got no real problems there, but I know some people have noted it before, so I thought I would address it. Other storage options. So there is a storage rack here, so you can put two three and a half inch drives in here. Or, of course, you can put two and a half inch drives on the removable caddies. The caddies are a little bit on the cheap side, just a generic kind of plastic thing. There is a foam washer in each of the three mounting points on each side, which normally you only use two of, depending on the age of the drive. So yeah, it's absolutely fine, does what it needs to do. They have got the punch outs in them as well. So if you want to put two and a half inch drives and secure them in there, you can do very easily. I did notice as well, there is just about enough room on the top of the cage between the actual bottom of the motherboard and the tray, etc., to put in another two and a half inch drive. So if you really are looking to cram in a bunch of drives in here, you could slot another SATA drive in there or two and a half inch drive quite easily. If you don't want to have this in at all, 
Very easy to do, it's not riveted in, so there's only just four screws. Take out the four screws and you can move the cage out of the way altogether. Currently, as it's set up from the factory, it's in the forward position, so not giving a great deal of room at the front. So if you were planning to put additional fans in or a radiator, then you may want to move this back a little bit. With it in the forward position, they do suggest you can have up to a 200 mil power supply. With it in the backward position, up to 160 mil. Now, depending on obviously your power supply and how it's set up, modular cables, etc., and what the modular plugs are actually like, you may find that differs slightly. But realistically, there is quite a lot of room here. And if you're using even just a semi modular power supply, you think you're going to be absolutely fine. Something else nice of note, which uh, isn't really a big deal, but it's actually something which pleases me and actually makes life a lot easier. Where we've got the punch outs for cable management, they're all in very sensible places. And actually the ones they've put here are actually perfect size for putting through 10 mil Velcro straps. So if you want to Velcro cable manage, then you can do very easily. Again, something that's just overlooked quite often, but actually makes cable management a lot, lot easier. Like I said earlier, really nice big pass-throughs there for EPS connectors. You can put eight pin ones through there very, very easily. Loads of room to work with. Absolutely brilliant, no issues at all. Taking a look at the wiring on the back here. So we've got for the fans, you've got, like I said, the three pin five volt addressable RGB with the pass through, which has got the connector on the end. So you can put it on there to save any short circuits. Four pin PWM connection for the fans. When it comes to front panel IO, so we've got the HD audio, you've got the front panel connection. So power switch reset, etc., etc., And also you've got a dual USB 3.0 port. So you've got two ports on the front, which is always nice to see. No USB 2.0s on this, but I don't think there's something which is particularly missed, to be honest. Taking a look on the bottom of the case, so again, nothing particularly exciting here. Nice to see the feet, actually. You've got nice chunky feet on here to raise it off the deck a little bit more. So potentially, even if you are putting this on carpet, which clearly you shouldn't do if you can possibly help it, but it's going to give you a little bit of room between the intake on the bottom and also the case, etc. So yeah, excellent. The filter, not the best. We see these on a lot of cases, just a cheap mesh filter. Does the job, but yeah, it would have been nice to have that on a removable tray. But if it adds to the cost, then I don't think it's the end of the world. Also, you've got the four screws. So one, two, three, four. Undo the screws. You can move that cage out altogether or move it back a little bit should you need to if you're putting in a 360 mil or additional fans, etc. in the front there. The feet themselves got nice little foam padding on there. The foam itself, I prefer rather than rubber because the foam doesn't mark surfaces. So as with most people these days, you're probably going to be using a white desk of some sort or a very clean looking desk. Last thing you want is rubber marks all over the desk. So yeah, foam feet works for me. Looking at the top section, so we've got it currently with the filter taken off, the magnetic filter. And as you can see, there's a really nice offset between the back of the motherboard and the front there. So 120 mil fans in there, up to two, or two 140 mil fans, still giving you a nice offset. So it's not gonna impede on any VRMs or anything. Loads of depth there to work with, like I said earlier. So yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to doing a build in this. Okay, so as is customary on the channel, we'll take a quick look at the addressable RGB. So we're just running out of a power supply. There's no other controller other than the one that's built in here. So if you had a motherboard which didn't support it and you just want to make it look like a nice PC, then this is what you can do. So obviously you've got to see the fans there. The RGB button is actually quite recessed, so I'm going to use a screw actually to make my life a little bit easier. So pattern-wise, you've got the usual things. So you've got the fade in, various colors, which you can cycle through. You've also got statics in there as well. And the white color actually is really nice. It's a really nice white. It possibly looks slightly blue on camera. There is a very slight blue tinge to it. So do bear that in mind if you're looking to go for a monochrome build, purples, etc. Then you've got your statics. All on that nice clicky power button. And we've got unicorn puke, which is the one I've been waiting for. I do like the unicorn puke. I think it looks really nice. The fans themselves, actually, they are center lit, but they're not blacked out in the middle. So it does give a quite a nice effect as if there's something else actually going on in the very center rather than the blades. So yeah, so quite an interesting effect. Um, you can go through and there's other kind of cycle colors there. And that is the very slow Aurora fade, as I call it. This is kind of one of the original RGB types of things where it just flows through the various colors, but still very, very nice. I like it a lot. I'm looking for something negative to say about this case, and I'm actually struggling. For somewhere in the region of about £40, I actually paid a little bit less than that. I think I paid about 35 or 37 because it was on special offer at Amazon.co.uk. 
uh, links of which we do post on both ShopSmart and also in our Discord. So if you want to check out either of those, you're more than welcome to. Links will be in the video description as always. I think even if you paid what is currently the normal recommended retail price for this, which is around about 40 to 45 pounds, I think it's a great case, it really is. Something else which I didn't mention, which I'm looking at now, which I should have, is actually on the rear panel, if I can find it. The rear panel, the way it actually attaches is quite decent. It's uh, almost hinged. So you've got a full section down there, which actually slots into the back. And this is going to aid cable management. So when you actually slot it in the front, pu push the panel in, do up the two thumb screws on the back. It's going to be very easy to do. That is something, there is slightly less cable management room in the back here than what I've been used to on some other cases but it's still a decent enough amount of room there. There's a good kind of half inch or so there. So yeah, it's not tight by any means and you're not gonna be getting to the point where it's like the uh, holiday suitcase where you're trying to crush it all in, but with some uh, reasonable cable management in there, I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. And like I said before, I'm really, really looking forward to doing a build in this. I've got a thing for MSI at the moment. I'll be completely honest and upfront. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video. They haven't paid me to say anything. They haven't even sent me the case. I bought it myself. I just feel at the moment MSI are offering fantastic value for money in terms of the whole ecosystem. And now that they're doing relatively cheap cases, the keyboards and mice are coming down in price, the motherboards are excellent value for money. I think they are definitely onto a winner. So if you are planning on doing an MSI theme build and you're not sure what case to go for, then I think for around about 40 pounds, this is definitely got to be on the top of your shopping list. But what I think isn't important, as always, what is important is what you guys think. So let us know in the comment section what you think of this case. Is it a winner? Do you like this angled design? I actually, the more I see it, the more I like it. I, at first, I didn't like it because I wanted a full mesh front. But now actually using it and looking at the different angles, the way the light picks up on it in certain places, yeah, I'm really starting to like it. And the fact that you can fit a 360mm radiator at front, especially if you go for one of MSI's 360s at the moment, which seem to be extremely cheap. So, yeah, definitely a winner in my opinion. Anyway, that's enough for now. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.